this is step one to putting together schedule in Primavera. Um, set, step number one is setting up a project. So when you open up Primavera, it's going to give you this login screen. Um, you see it has a login name and password and language and database. So you're going to go ahead and just log in, which is this previous set, previously set up. Um, and there's a video on that. Um, so you just go ahead and log in. Um, when you click log in, you see it'll go through various different, uh, give you various different information. In my case, it said I didn't pick an industry, but that's okay. Just hit okay. And then it'll take a second to kind of open up and let me center it back on the screen here. And uh, you see this is the default screen. It brings you to the project screen. Because we're using P6 Pro, you can have multiple different projects uh, that show up in the enterprise version. So we want to go ahead and set up a project. So we'll go ahead and we'll go uh, file. Um, and then we'll just create a new project. And you can walk through the wizard. Um, I don't necessarily like to walk through all the individual steps. Um, I'll just go through and I'll name it. I'll give it a project ID and we'll just say one, two, three, four. And we'll give uh, the, pr the project name. We're going to go ahead and just say, call it a, a prelim schedule sample project. And we'll give it a date and I'll just pick an arbitrary date here. Uh, 10 10 2018 and we'll just go ahead and put hit finish and you notice that up top here it went ahead and you you it has a naming uh, the naming of it, it you know essentially put up there um, so you'll see the project is listed here the number and the project uh, you can see down in the detail section of Primavera you can go ahead and data input a lot of different information uh, we're going to focus on the things that are important and the things that are important only so the first step of setting up a project is to name it which we just did uh, we used a wizard to do that say that we want to save it um, now this is a database product meaning that you can import and export it you don't have to hit save as if you accidentally X out of Primavera it'll save it in the database where you're at but just to be safe say I want to export it you're going to export Primavera XCR to whatever version we're using 16.2 we're going to hit next we want to have the project outputted you want to have the same name uh, that we used we're going to export that you're going to say what you're going to name it, you're going to put where you're going to name it at. Um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and name it. Um, and the naming structure we're going to use is we're going to just go prelim schedule sample project 10 10 2018. Okay. You notice that I didn't put slashes here. I put uh, little hyphens here. And because if you put slashes, it won't let you save it. Um, it just it gives you a fault so make sure you use dashes so we hit we'll go ahead and save that and hit finish and you see it says the export was successful now you notice that if I want to bring it in later I'll just go and file and import you know it's still there still in the database but if I want to bring it in I'll hit Primavera project um, I, I choose the type here you know an XCR file um, I'll say I want the project I will click on the three dots here you know say that that's the project that I want to bring in right and then uh, we'll just hit next and we want to match the existing you know uh, if you're bringing in a schedule and you want to basically match existing what you had working in there we can just hit match we could also you know we can update we can create a new project we can do all these individual things uh, normally we just update an existing project right so then we hit next we'll import it see it asks you where to import it and hit next next and finish and now we successfully imported it, right? So what it did is we updated the existing file. You can add it, make it a new one. It gives you a few options when you import it. Um, so uh, we, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up. Um, we right click and we hit open project and it's going to open another tab. The other tab is called activities. This is where the detailed project view will be. 
okay um, so we named it you know preliminary schedule right now but we're gonna change the names as we go through the process we go from preliminary to proposed for review submitted for approval approved baseline and schedule update so the naming structure of it will be different uh, as we progress through the process we'll change uh, the name uh, we always want to associate a date with uh, the schedule uh, that helps prevent any kind of issues um, of overriding an existing you know file so it doesn't always fix it but it fixes it nine times out of ten in this case I went ahead and named it 10 10 2018 so let me show you some print functions right now we have nothing in here um, really uh, but we want to show you I want to show you how to print some different things if you go file print preview and you see that we have this we have the the the, the schedules right there um, and uh, let me see and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this over um, and in the in the section of the it's it, and you can't see it in there it gives you an option uh, to go ahead and set up some of the print preferences um, and some of the print preferences you know there is a uh, page setup view um, and we're going to click on that and it's going to give us this dialog box and we want to print the landscape uh, we want to fit everything to being one page wide um, because a schedule to be accurately read needs to be one page wide we want to uh, of course we can we can do it on tabloid tabloid is 11 by 17 we want to keep it that way not really gonna worry about the margins you see you have very slim margins so we can get as much on the paper as possible uh, headers we can put different things in headers and footers um, and in the options here we want to start at project start and finish at project finish so that's what we want to be shown you can see the options here uh, but generally we always want to do project start to project finish when we do schedule updates we want to may only go from the data date to project finish so so we have 11 by 17 uh, we have a landscape and we have one page wide and we just go ahead and hit OK and you can kind of see how it says it's still set up there so uh, we'll go out of the print preview function okay and uh, now that we have the layout set um, and it's one wide we want to look at some of the columns that we want to put in uh, some of the columns that we want to put in um, uh, first off uh, unlike Microsoft uh, project you have to insert the columns a little bit differently if you go up here and I, I, re I locate everything next uh, to the funnel right uh, the funnel is the filter um, we go, we want to go to uh, you know to add the different um, uh, columns that we're going to input we want to go all the way over uh, to this this one to left of the filter we want to, have to click on that it's going to give you this dialog box now everything you see here is what's shown everything you see here is not what's shown but what's available so what columns do you need well we need the activity ID column um, that's very important we need the the, the 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 task or the activity name the next one is duration um, we want to have duration you notice I moved it from one place to the other so it's organized in the correct way um, next item is early start early finish late start late finish and I need to know those because I'm gonna go ahead and take out start and finish right I want to have early start or early finish because um, those are key pieces of information that we need to know okay so early starts right there early finishes right there we want to have late start and we want to have late finish okay uh, the only other columns that we want to put in is there, put in there are the actual start and the actual finish and um, if we go up here we have the actual start and actual finish so um, one of the last columns we want to do is we want to do um, the total float which we have here okay we also want to put budgeted total cost so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of some of these items here go ahead and move them over 
we got budgeted uh, um, budgeted total cost we want to have uh, percent complete the physical percent complete now there's duration percent complete but we want the physical the actual physical percent complete of the work on the job site right and uh, last but not least, we want the earned value cost. And we'll go in here to cost. We want to look for earned value cost. And what is earned value cost? Earned value cost is simply um, right there. Earned value. Earned value cost. All right. Uh, earned value cost is simply you take the budget units, say if it's $1,000 times 100%, the earned value cost would be 100%. Now, if this was 90%, so $1,000, 90%, it would be $900. So it automatically calculates. Now, these are the columns that are important that we want to see and are fairly standard. So we go ahead and hit OK. And you can see there's a lot of columns in there. So we probably want to shrink things over a little bit and move things around to make it look a little prettier and be able to fit as much because it's always a challenge fitting everything on 11 by 17 because you know that although 11 by 17 may seem a fairly large page once you get a schedule on there with everything in there it can become tight so we want to kind of slim down the columns a little bit so so in conclusion we've uh we've went ahead and created the naming structure which you see there uh, I showed you how to import and export the file uh, we talked about um, the, the fact the files name would change as throughout the project from proposed to review to approve baseline to schedule update we always want to put a date associated with it so we prevent overriding our documents I showed you the print preview functions uh, you know the layout the appropriate layout to use we have a tabloid view we want to make sure we have uh, the the page printout view of being one wide um, I showed you the proper columns to insert into uh, the you know the schedule so that you can give all the information that is important and uh, of course we're going to move on from here to step number two and that's establish establishing defaults within the schedule and that's pretty much it for setting up a project.